about why you may want to look at OpenStack, and we're going to just talk about now what it really is so people get a better idea. Um, you know, there are a lot of companies out there, and everybody wants to do something, and the costs have just gotten crazy to be able to set up your infrastructure. The biggest problem that people have is they say, hey, I need a database, or a developer needs an area to go work on. And while this may be hard for some people to believe, it can take three to six months to get that set up for someone. Uh, companies that are considered quick will get it done in a month. Okay? Uh, and that's going to be The idea behind it is I'll actually show it, uh, an example where you can create something in a matter of minutes. So what you're able to do is to make it easier and quicker for people to do their work. Makes sense, right? So here it talks a little bit about provisioning, right? Usually takes two to 26 weeks. IDOPS, there's a whole bunch of time that you go through without making sure that everything's set up properly. If you're a, um, a recent organization, you may be using some sort of configuration management like Puppet or Ansible, Soft Stack, Chef, to be able to quickly deploy. You may be using uh, Kickstart or something else to be able to build them up and configure it. But again, takes time and takes a lot of stuff. Your business guys are like, hey, I need it tomorrow. I got this deadline in two weeks. I need to give a developer an instance so we can start planning. I need QA to have an area to start planning in their own because this is a special project that came up. Or worst case, we just got attacked and I got to figure out what the heck's happening. So I need to make a copy of what's in production so people can start debugging it and fix it. Anything of surprise that I've just mentioned in the last couple minutes? It all makes sense. People sort of get that. Uh, so again, one of the things is open cloud. And open stack allows you to do that. 100% okay. open source, open API, um, vendor agnostic. You can run any operating system that runs uh, virtualized. So depending on what you're using, if you're using KVM, you're using VMware, uh, there's ways to look at the Zen. Um, don't you know, I'm starting to look and see if I can hook it into LDOS or the Spark stuff, but to be able to do those sort of connections. So you can have a nice um, one pane of glass in the interface that you can use to manage that infrastructure. So people who are using it, right, these are, while it says confidential, this is not confidential information because it's out there. But you're going to see a lot of different companies that uh, are listed up there who are doing. Um, open stack stuff. So, very, very quick. The other thing is, think about it in a uh, environment, I have hardware that's not being used effectively, right? I'm only using 10% of it, 20% of it, um, so the costs are huge of what's being wasted. And this allows you to more effectively use your hardware. Because I'm running more instances, I'm running more stuff on those boxes. Because once you start using Docker, so I'm using containers, or I start using uh, virtual machines, I'm able to increase that flow and be able to better utilize or better use my hardware. Um, I'm taking questions whenever you want. That's exactly what I'm saying. So the question becomes that you need to take a look at is, is this going to be a public facing cloud or is it for internal development and QA? Okay. So if it's for internal development and QA, I may want to have that on prem. I may want to have a or have. So I don't need to go and buy hardware that I need to rack and stack in a data center and pay for AC bandwidth and rest. Right. If I need to, if I'm a small startup, 
and I need to have something out there in the public, probably going to make sense to look at an actuary, WS, rack space, what have you, to put that instance out. Maybe I don't want to do my development. Maybe I want to do my development in house. I want to pay whatever that is. Right? Um, the other thing may happen is my application may require some physical machines also that I need to talk to. Right? And I'm not going to have access to those physical machines in the cloud. So the biggest thing being databases. Right? Um, if I need a huge database, you know, like an Oracle or a SQL Server or something larger that needs to run on physical hardware just because of the, uh, the I.O. that it needs or the TPU that needs I don't want to virtualize it or run in a container, then I could do that in my basement, right? Or not like <coughs> So what this really is doing is addressing those to help cut costs if I um, can have that as servers internal to my network. Okay? Once I need to go external, then I start needing to look, okay, if I have a good pipe into my office, into my building, into my house, um, or does it make sense to go co locate with uh, Does that answer the question? Okay. Yep. Uh, on the same lines, I was a startup and I had an idea that I eventually want to put out there into the commercial uh, How transferable is what I would develop in a single machine in the house? Open stack or whatever to whatever AWS or Rackspace yep. or the others are providing? Uh, very well, so it depends on how you want to build it. Okay. So, what I would do is I can create my instance and I can start a, uh, and I create an image from that, right? So, basically, I can say, take a snapshot of my running machine. I take that snapshot, I now have basically a QCAL or some sort of image. I can then convert it to whatever format is needed to go to an AWS manager or a Rackspace or whatever. I can then load it and then run it in an okay. If I'm using, depending on what tooling I may be using, that so means there is a transfer uh, standard uh, between these different uh, systems. So there's a tool called JustFS that will help you do conversion of images. If it will convert to the place that you're going to be determined. But there are ways that can possibly work out like talking in a minute either. Uh, the other thing is depending on how you go about to build that instance, you may be able to take your, you know, I'll call it kickstart, right? So how do I build the OS and load the applications on it? And then I do my configuration, right, through some sort of CR configuration management tool. And I could apply that to an instance, you know, for instance, AMI in, um, in Amazon if I wanted. So there are ways to do it. How easy it is is PPD. Is that answer? It's yeah. not a. It's not an easy type thing. I'm sorry. It's not a cut and dry. No, it is not a cut and dry where you know push A and you get B. And you have to remember that the whole idea is if you go to Amazon, right? You set up everything from networking to all the external firewalls, how you get into environment, all your storage areas, all of that stuff is sort of not in your VM. So if you're talking about an environment you set up with many VMs and you want to run that independently in different environments, just taking a VM is not going to take any of that stuff with you. And that import can be more tricky than anything else. And there are providers we have, not left hand, we call the hand, we talk the hand here, was one of the guys that had an overarching architecture that could control both OpenStack and Amazon, and if you have a single metadata that could be deployed both places. So they transfer the APIs for you. So when you set up a network, you set up a storage. They could do that regardless of whether you use the stack or AWS or Azure or all that stuff. So you have only one place to set it up and then you can move things around. So there are two ways to do that. But inside the process, <laughs> that's a different matter. It really depends on what the VM is trying to do. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that later, where you may have your storage maybe external to the virtual machine that you're dealing with. And then it's a question of how you get that data. But originally, you probably might go up to some of my questions. Um, having development in house and production in the commercial world, uh, how different could they be? And uh, if you're starting to develop something new, how easily is it to move it back out of the commercial world? So that being said, there are uh, vendors will offer commercial open stack. 
So at that point, it would become um, easier to take what you've done on site and move it off site. Rackspace. Rackspace offers something. Um, there are other companies that do, and some that maybe can have some people to learn from each other. Okay. Um, so, again, you know, it talks about, you know, there, it gets very interesting very quick. So, everything is now called SD something, right? Software defined storage, software defined networks. Um, um, you're going to hear about uh, NVF, uh, Network Virtualized Foundations or Functions or something, but they're basically virtualizing everything you think of. Right? There's now something called load balancing as a service. So I can basically click a button and now my load balancing scales up and down as I need, right? Firewalls as a service. Uh, everything is becoming as a service. Um, there are companies, uh, network companies, that are doing things. Uh, Juniper has something called Contrail, which is the software defined network, and there is a version called Open Contrail. And so a lot of you go out and you know, switch it and configure everything that you need on the network from that one place, build in all sorts of rules for the you know, and have everything magically done by going to a single chain of time, doing some clicking, and then you can go out and do that some configurations for you. Okay. It's all very interesting. It's very, uh, it's scary how cutting edge some of this stuff is, right? So the last time I was working for was software defined storage. Um, now I'm working about software defined networking, which is uh, my networking is like this, and now I'm virtualizing it, and it's all defined software, and it's getting even more magical to me on how all that graphic works. But, Again, that's what we're talking about. When you get out of here, you know, we talked a little bit about virtual machines, we talked containers. Um, the other thing that is coming, and I think it's going to be in Liberty, uh, not just here's something called Ironic, uh, which is a project for OpenSAC. And Ironic is going to allow OpenSAC to control physical hardware. So it's not going to work. So you can do virtual machines and do containers today. So if you want to go look, ironic because it was an iron or hard iron or servers. Does that translate to being able to operate with the internet of things? It probably will. I mean the internet of things is more of a buzz, but it's it what the um, ability to connect to the big Internet of Things, right? My toaster, my refrigerator, and the rest. Unsure, but it will be able to connect. So, for instance, I was just talking about Oracle, right? The database. It will be able to manage my physical server much more. That's one of the goals in my mind. Um, all right. So that's sort of it for the magic slide stuff. So let me go over here. Do that. Do that. Yeah. All right. So I am. Um, I think you can go back to my screen, Peter. Or maybe you can I'm just showing. Oh, you are. Okay. Awesome. All right. So um, I am logging on to a server. And this is an open staff setup. As you can see, down the left hand side, there are a number of um, tabs that you can look at. So I have project. I'm logged in as an admin with admin rights. So I have project, administrators, identity management, and Murano. Murano being a application catalog. So the idea behind that, um, I'll talk a little bit about Murano. I have a separate side slide deck that I'll be able to share with Murano. So under project, I am in um, the, um, uh, the computer. I'm looking at the overview, right? So in the overview, how many instances are running? So being RAM, IP, security groups, and so on, right? So I can take a look at how long have these machines been running, what are they doing, what are they consuming, 
right? How many hours have I done? I can write a report, um, and I can get a bunch of information. Here are the instances that are actually out there and running right now. Right? Remember I talked about I could take a, I can uh, snapshot my instance and then export it. That's sort of what, or not sort of, that is what we're talking about here. So I can create a snapshot. Um, here's my internal IP, the 10.0.5.2. This point three is my external IP. I could associate a floating IP if it didn't have one. So for instance, if I came down here, I could associate the new floating IP with this, which means I can give it an IP that has a public interface. So if I want people to be able to get to it from the internet, I can allow it. I then need to create a security group to say what ports I'm going to allow in. Right? Uh, my default security group allows us to stay changed. That's it. So if I wanted to be a web browser that I have to open it for 480, do an HTTPS for 443, or the other points I need. But again, these are all things that you need to set up um, and manage. Uh, now, one of the things that's kind of cool is I don't think I have, oh, here. Okay, I should be able to connect this guy. So here is uh, the IP of that box. Let me just go ahead and click that. This will get I'm doing things in the command line. This is the magic form ID that I need. It's all it's automatically generated when I'm creating a standard page. So I get sent. It's active. What zone is it in? When was it created? How long has it been up? It's a type medium, which is 40 or freedom and two virtual CPUs and 40 disk. This is the network that it belongs to, clicking right on. Uh, it's infernal. Here's a security group, so I'm allowing 422 in, 4001, 7001 MCP, 80, uh, 1050, and 88. It's actually based on an image called Ubuntu Docker Morano Command. So, what I've done is I've created the way I've made my images. The operating system is Ubuntu. I'm writing on the container, the Docker container here. I'm allowing Murano to be able to um, use this image, so it needs to have a Murano agent running on it, so when it starts, I can talk to it. And then Kubernetes for control. Any questions so far? It's kind of uh, getting out there. One of the things I can click on this console, and it looks like the demo uh, is with me. It's not connected right now. Usually, if I know the uh, by default, I have it set up. The process. I cannot. Also. The good thing that I can do through here is you know, I can see that if it's up and running, so I can see from the console. What's going on? But what I wanted to show was by clicking on the console tab, you'd be able to see the change. So let's jump back out and see if there are any other instances out there that I can um, quickly see the console so you can get an idea of what you're seeing. Um, maybe another issue. Um, I can see some log information. Um, so we got, uh, the, I'm sorry, that's the action log. This is more of it um, that you can keep on And there's no logs. Should be logs on my image. There were at some point. <laughs> so I can take a look. Uh, by default, shows the last of five lines of the log. But you can see it's running um, to the tool. So here is where it starts the agent, right? It's running the auto agent, setting up um, uh, server keys, and then uh, going to try to cloud and be able to uh, set itself up. But I can get some ideas of basic logging of what's going on from here. So again, let me just 
show you what I completely do is I come here to instances. I can say, let's go ahead and create a new instance. So it's going to pop up. It's going to ask me some questions. So this is sort of the self service. I am in to create a user into this user and talk to this environment. And here's what they can do. They may be able to create a new image, stop an image. So I'm giving people the ability for some self service. Uh, there's only one zone, so I'm just saying that zone. I can give it a name um, for this, and you'll see this where it uh, appears. I need to pick out what size I want. Um, when you pick a size, let's go over here. How much memory, how much disk it's getting. Uh, how many instances do I want to create? I'm just going to create one, one right now. I want to boot from an image. So when I say boot from an image, I need to say which image do I want to boot from. So I can come down here and I can call this image. Um, access. What do I want it to do? I want to have um, called access to this box. So from default networking. I actually have a key pair that I've created and uploaded into the server. So I'm going to say, okay, let's go ahead and use my key pair so I can use the same thing. Networking, what networking is it going to get? If I click to add this network, this is going to give me an external IP because it's called the XT network. Um, there are working on six. This is uh, Juno. I believe Kilo is supporting IPv6. Uh, if I want it to run anything, if I want any scripts I want it to run after the install, I can set that. And if I want to do anything specific around this partition, I can set that information. So I'm going to click launch now, and it's going to go back to the and start in the spot. <coughs> so you can see it's in build state. Um, and it's spawning what you can do. Here, on the console, I'm not going to see anything on the console because it's not that far along in the process yet. If I go back to um, instances, and we'll wait for it to get past spawning. Um, one of the things about this magic shirt that I have, you're going to see all sorts of different areas that make up open stack. So, um, so we have this rising. Uh, I want to make sure I get them all. Uh, I'm not sure enough on the video account. I don't think it matters. Those are your major projects that you're going to see discussed when it comes to um, open stack. So Horizon, that's just who we get, right? So that's sort of a dashboard that allows me to do the work. Nova is my compute nodes. So that's where my virtual machines are running on my document containers. Glance is uh, where I'm going to store images long term. So remember I saw those images that I could, I said I want to create a GGP image here. That's being pulled from land. So I created a two cow image. I uploaded it to um, either to the command line or through Verizon, and it gets stored in land for longer. Neutron is the networking. There is an older networking. Ignore it. Do not use it. Don't play with it. Use neutron. Okay? Um, the other one has been uh, going away for a year or two, still around, but I can't disappear. 
very soon now that all the virtual network stuff is in uh, software-defined network that's coming online. Cinder is a block storage. So with Cinder, um, so block storage, think of it as a disk, right? It's a matter of I can create the volume here and then attach it to my virtual machine that is running on it. Okay? And then um, Keystone. Keystone is where all my authentication works. So um, by default, it does some stuff. Okay? Daily set of manage it. It can go out that we need. It can go out that we need. Okay? Uh, but Keystone is where all of the auth works. And ever I'm trying to do anything, it's going to authentic. It's going to go to Keystone to see this is person authenticated. And effectively, there's think of it uh, similar to Arbrooks, right? I'm going to have a ticket. It's going to get passed around. I'm looking to get this guy to update it and do this functionality. But Keystone is very important. Everybody is going to go check with Keystone to make sure. Person wants to do something is able to uh, is able to do it. The last one that I left out is Swift. Swift is a storage. Also, this is um, an object store. So those who know AWS S3, this is S3. Okay. So all of these pieces, making sure that they're working together, that they're talking together, that's what opens back. And the distribution does is it integrates all these pieces. Now, things that are pink, ironic. This is why the project's coming. Nomado was just accepted of stack in uh, Juno, which is, uh, no, Kilo, the last release. Liberty's next release that is scheduled for October timeframe. But uh, last month was. Um, Kilo's, re uh, yeah, Kilo's release, and Murano got accepted upstream then. Trying to remove the order of my alphabet, it all messed up after uh, H and before Q. So, questions about those magic pieces? Yep. Well, my question is this. Uh, eventually, these virtual components that you will have to put on some physical infrastructure. Yep. Um, and that physical infrastructure is
into the So rack space is the number one right now. So rack space actually, um, my recollection is, and anybody out there feel free to correct me, as I know you will, um, I believe it was rack space and uh, NASA were the two main people behind it that started. So I think uh, NASA was doing something, rack space was doing something, and they ended up speaking <coughs> talking to each other, and that's where it was came from five years ago. It just celebrated its birthday in last week. Someone in the know that the racks may be heading towards the field in the staff environment. Um, so it's like, yeah, I don't know a whole lot of what we do when we're around the field of racks and how to run out of racks. Yeah. Um, and, 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 yeah, it, 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 once you find on the front of the API, it's not necessarily true for the latest, not open stack, not necessarily true for racks. And the other thing I've heard, um, we've talked in various different companies around here, the racks may be actually racks and how that game is too. Really? Um, they don't want that to be the big thing anymore. It's getting crushed by AWS, natural rather than interesting, but Azure staff is actually using now. I think most of the cloud developers are going to be another issue. Yeah, so the, the big three players uh, that you have, you have Red Hat, you have Mohantis, and you have HP. Um, the only one that I can talk specifically to is Mohantis. That's the only one that I have a lot of experience with being a Mohantis employee. Um, and right now, our release is based on Juno, which is one release behind. Um, in the very near term, we'll have a key release available for people. Um, that said, Red Hat has something, uh, and AP has something. Also, I am, um, and if they add anything that is not open, I do not know. I would be surprised if Red Hat does anything that they've not open source. You know, Peter, if they open source, they need changes in the open stack. The audio is so It's not all open. Audio is free, and it's not changed. And that's your open stack. The open stack right now is all here, right? The audio is changed. And so, Red Hat is everything from Red Hat's open back in our or pass back to our open source, or is there any? Not yet. Like there's no proprietary. No, no proprietary. Okay, so just like it's the, stack, it's the standard spiel of the source. Okay. Okay. It's, uh, it's uh, the audio ahead of the curve on new features, new parameters, which is what comes out. And that's usually the only differentiations you're going to find. Right, which is, uh, yeah, so I could go and I could grab uh, from openstack.org and download um, Kilo today. And that was slightly different from uh, what RDO has, what Red Hat, OpenStack has, and what Morantis OpenStack has. Right? This was slightly behind as we're looking to release the next versions. Okay. I should be up now. So let's take a quick view on your clip on the instance here. Um, if you notice, the ID is something much different from the name. So whenever I have line would be based on the ID. Uh, this must be an issue with the blocks in here. Because typically I'm able to see uh, this without a problem. So let me go here. Um, as I can see, I took the default. So 22 is open anywhere. So I can do this. Uh, do that. Uh, and then I don't think that's being shared, is it, either? I, no, I'm showing your screen. Oh, you're showing my screen? Okay. Um, what I was going to do was to just associate Kim to that. So let me. Uh, now you just see it. Now. Yeah. I can see. I could put that up there. Now oh, I can see it. Okay. I'll have you bash. Okay. So, should be also SSH minus uh, uh, SSH, and then I can call it. There it is. Let's see if this works. Yeah. 
it just appeared again in my screen. Huh? Did I mess something up? Yeah, your window disappeared. Oh. I wonder if it's the same. It should be. All right. The demon or the demon deities are with me. Did the surprise and all the SSH in the box, but I've set that key. So what I was going to do was as I get to the box, just to show you that I could get there. Um, but it's not. <coughs> so let me just go back to over here. My desktop. Not the right desktop. Go through sort of a little example so you can see what it would be. As far as an admin, I would come to our deck and I'm going to look at different projects. I'm creating different projects. Projects being, think of it as a, uh, uh, it's an untenant space, right? So, for instance, I have a project, and I have a key profit, and they have, you know, super secret, uh, new product X project, and then I can have users who have access to do things inside of that project. Okay. And they are, I brand them different resources, right? How many virtual machines, how much disk, how many networks, all that information I then define and create a new project. So for instance, just to quickly show, let's create a project. I'm going to put a name, um, a description as today. Um, who are any members that I want, right? So I'm going to add myself right now. Uh, I'm going to make sure Cinder, Glance, <coughs> Heat, uh, this admin, Nova, Rano, Swift, Neutron. So I've pretty much given my entire infrastructure um, some abilities to do things in here. I can then set my focus on the top 10 volumes of a terabyte of space, security groups, right, all faults that I will take. So I'm going to go ahead and create a project. I now have a new project out there called Nova. So let's go ahead and look at my users. So let's go ahead, I'm going to create a new user, and I'm going to call in Nova and that, and I'm going to do this. Password project one of the do is Nova Love, and I'm going to have a call that's a member. Let's go ahead and create that user, and I can't type passwords. Create a user, not now. I'm sorry, create a user Nova Love. So let's see what happens. I'm going to log out of this, and I'm going to log in as. Thanks. <coughs> uh, space. You want a chair? Would that be easier? No. Because then I'll trip over it. So now if I look at it and I look at an entity, all I can see is projects that can't add users because I'm a member. I don't have admin rights. Okay. I look at my overview, I look at what instances I'm running. Are there any images out there that I can use? Well, 
These are all full images. So if I look, I see across the top, next to the word images underneath the line, you'll see projects shared with me in public. So in this OpenStack instance, when I upload an image, I can say it's public, which means all tenants that I all projects I create are able to see those images. Okay? If I want, I can create a new image. I need to give it a name. Uh, I can give it a description. It's going to be an image file. So it's going to say, okay, where does it exist? And um, where, let's see. Oops. That's what we're here. Uh, I happen to know. U means Ubuntu. I created it. And I have MA, which means I installed some Romano agent. And it's a type QCAP. So I can say, yep, let's choose this stuff. If it was a different format, or can I figure out the format? Okay, the format here. So I have all uh, AMI, ARI, API, right? So all Amazon guys. So this is QCAP. Uh, I can set a minimum disk, a maximum disk. If it's public or if it's protected, if I don't select either of these, only this image is going to be uh, this. So I'm going to go ahead and get the time, and we'll see if it's able to network and handle uploading half a tip or half a tip or not. And if not, we'll get a time out here shortly. But what I'm able to do is I can clean all the images, and then I can upload them to make them available. So what that means is um, I have a golden image, right? So I can now create my golden image. I can put all the magic that I may need to put in there, right? Uh, set up I'm using curve ropes. Set up progress and using LDAP for authentication. I can set all that information in this image. And then everybody who starts it is going to get the security and the packages that my IQ organization has decided is needed. Do you have a question? No. You all right with that, Sean? You look a little confused. No, 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 no. You okay? Are you watching? No, no, no. As far as so provisioning, um, I can provision an image in this <coughs> this lab. Typically, it provisions an image in under five minutes. So once I say create an image or create an instance, like I did, within five minutes, I have an instance on the front. Uh, I'm going to show a more complicated instance once this thing times out using Arata, where it's actually going to create three or four instances and interconnect them. So that is uh, the advantage of, excuse me, the advantage of Arata, and I will do that. So um, I think what I want to do is I'm going to turn off screen sharing for a minute uh, because now you're just seeing my face. I've uh, been recording for the last five minutes. Is that I'm sorry? I've been showing you, or not the screen. Okay, so you're not showing the screen right now? So. Okay. All right, so anybody who may see anything on the screen, um, just ignore it. Um, because you may see uh, names of companies. Uh, come on, So let me go ahead and do it quickly on what is Murano and why do I care? Are you sharing that? Oh. Yeah, I'm going to be sharing it here in a second. Okay, so we we'll go back here. See it. Not anymore. It's not? It was. And it was oh, I know why. Because I'm using this long window when I hit 
the curve, which took it away. So now I'm still sharing. Okay, so just a quick part of what we're going to do is put it back on why I care about it, who the different roles are, how I create an application, um, and some other magic pieces. So, very quick look. It's an application have. I think it raises a shopping cart. So we're going to take a look at it in a second so you see what that means. For instance, um, my organization sets up word pro uh, WordPress instances for people. So if I have WordPress, I need a database. I need a web server, right? To be able to give you WordPress because it's stored in a database. Well, imagine if I had to go and set up a database and install the WordPress um, database and all the tables inside of it, and then set the passwords, right? Then I had to set up a web server. I had to put the WordPress software there. And I had, to, I had the two make the two things connected. You know, there are a lot of steps. There's nice documents, and I can cut and paste, but it's pretty tedious. And you know, let's say I live in the Washington D.C. area, and they pay me, you know, eighty thousand dollars a year as a sysadmin. I have some experience. It's forty dollars uh, an hour. That's what they're paying me, right? Uh, and let's say cutting and pasting and waiting for things to happen. It's going to take an hour. So it costs $50 every time someone wants to set up WordPress. OK, well, that's not too bad. Well, let's say I work for a company, and our business model is to provide WordPress for people on the internet. Now, imagine I get 100 people less a day, right? It's going to take me 100 hours to go and do that. And maybe I can do some things that I can multitask, and maybe I can get it done a little bit quicker. Maybe I can solve that at a time. Right, maybe I can call 10 at a time. Uh, so if we're going to be able to do it in, um, in uh, four hours, and then, uh, or whatever, 20 hours, I guess, at that point. And so, you know, three to six days. Right? So again, it's going to take time. It's going to be a little bit slow. Imagine if I could just click on a button, sell service button, go get a cup of coffee, go outside, grab a snow, go run around. Later on, it's off and running. That's great. It's cost me, the company, nothing. I made the user to work through that. And that's something we can do with Murata. I'm going to show exactly how that works. So, push point deployment. Right? Uh, we're going to see this screen here, but you know, we're going into Murata and we're looking at the different applications that are available. So, um, OpenStack provides infrastructure as a service. Right? So, what it does is makes it easy. Take my infrastructure and to provide instances, provide areas for people to do things in. What Murano does is offer, uh, this is an older slide, this actually should say software as a service. So it installs software and makes it available for you to use. Why do I care? Uh, I can now make it sing everybody. So when anybody pushes a button and installs it, it's all installed and configured the exact same. Very important, very uh, uh, for management and configuration and debugging, you make my life a lot easier. The part that's so complex and long, right? As I just talked, this is relatively simple, right? It's a web server, it's a database. But imagine I'm doing something that is going to be a three tier, right? So I've added some middleware in there. Or let's say I am. I have some new super secret idea, so I'm going to have a web server in there. And then I may need, uh, I'll find a database in there. I'll probably have some logic uh, in the middle way. I may have, um, be able to, I may have to go and connect to something outside. I may have five, six, seven different pieces I need to work with. Like once you start playing with Kubernetes, which is a controller for containers, um, Things get a lot more complicated, crazy things, and pods, and all sorts of crazy stuff. Knowing and keeping everything straight in your head, for me, as an old guy as well, I can't remember all the people. But if I just click on a button and have uh, everything filled in for me, and just ask questions, and I have to answer a question or click on a button, that I can do. So, in the context of your WordPress example, um, if in your core, your basic install, 
there are updates for the plugins, and you apply them, and you call your company to get those updates. But then if they provide, they have loaded a particular module that you weren't, that didn't have in your face, and they have to individually update each one of those. Right, so this isn't to update, this is just a creation point. So when I create a it makes it start. So I am not pushing, Miranda Piranha does not push updates out. So we don't have a big deal about it. So once it's installed, it's once it's installed, it's installed. Yep. Yep. The update becomes something that needs to be addressed. Now, now could you generate a new version? Yes. And then slide it in under your old one so that your customers got the new version. And everybody here would do a new install and get the new version. The old yes. customer, not get the new version. Yes. Yes. The tool is going to create a series of completed virtual machine images that have everything that you want in it from your environment to then get over to a actual platform that is starting to execute and would you tell us how to do it? Yes, that is correct. Technically, it should contain as not uh, virtual machines, but yes. I use virtual machines, but yes. Right. <laughs> not with Kubernetes. Uh, I'm not doing Kubernetes, but yes, if okay. it was Kubernetes, then it would okay. be. That's correct. I thought you said Kubernetes. So, if you do Kubernetes, uh, if you want to go down that route, uh, if you can do Mesosphere, if you want to go down that route, I think Kubernetes can be full Mesosphere, I forget now. Um, or you can go virtual. Yeah, yeah, Mesosphere and, uh, has a plug in for Kubernetes. Yeah. Uh, so, who are the two people? I have my application developers, right? So, I'm going to create environments that I want people to work with, that I want to have. So, I need to know how do I create these uh, applications that I need to consume. My cloud administrator needs to be able to take these and make them available for the stack. And then my end users are the people who are going to be consuming the applications. So, those are the three different roles of people who are there. Uh, when you're creating an application, things that you need to think about. What are the variables that I want the customer to buy? So, for instance, we'll see with WordPress. I want to database. What's my username and password going to be connected to the database? What's my admin user going to be WordPress? Right? So I need to collect that information. So think about the information, and we have somebody to use a, a, a GUI. To quickly do a pop up. So we have one that's a create instance where I created a new project. When I uploaded an image, we have that pop up screen. Very easily, some text files like create that, create that pop up screen. Um, I need to write my install and configuration script. And what it boils down to is the very last thing that happens is it's going to call, um, or by default, call a bash or a Python. Okay. So, to my scripts typically do DNF update or dumb update or app get update, right, to make sure that I, my image has all the latest packages. And then I'm going to do a DNF install WordPress. Uh, yum install WordPress. App get install WordPress. Right? I'm going to install whatever that package that I need to do is. And then, I may use uh, log instead to update some configuration files. I may pass configuration files in that I'm going to put in place, right? Where am I going to set that username passwords? All that is in a bash. In my example, I write bash scripts that can run that configuration for me. Okay, so that makes sense. So how does that get set up? Through this bash. So I'm good to Attach a patch, patch for this Murano application that's going to get run after the instance is created. That makes sense. Everybody following that? If I can get either like this or like this. Yep. What, what kind of script did you just have? So, a bash, a shell script. Oh, shell script. Okay. Uh, I then need to take all these text files and scripts and create a zip file. I need to upload it and test it. Then I can. Repeat. So, um, one of the things that you may need to do is there may not be an image out there ready for you to work. So, one of the things I was just talking about, I just uploaded an image, I just only uploaded an image. People probably said, okay, how did you create that image? Awesome. 
There is this, uh, there's a tool called disconnect building. Okay? So, uh, you need to get a whole bunch of pieces, right? So, I need to make sure that I have my arm agent. I need to have a disk image builder. I need to have an array data and a Ubuntu. I need to sort of have the utils. So make sure I have all that magic set up and right. So this is, let's get ready to build an image. Okay? Next thing I need to do is what are the packages that I need to download so that this image will run. Uh, again, job, DNF, app, get install. And the different pieces that I'm going to need to go and grab and ensure that over the box where I'm going to create these images. Okay? Next thing I need to do is uh, set the environment variable, and then I'm going to run this image builder, bit this dash image dash create. Am I going to do a VM? Am I going to do a you know, Docker instance? There are a number of options here. So if you just do this dash image dash create, Return, and I'll show you all the options are in on that, or go to your favorite search engine and type in the end page space, uh, disk image create. Type is it, what are the pieces? So I want, in this case, I want to build an Ubuntu image, I want it to install a Mono agent, and then I need to give it a name of the file that I want it to write that image test. Okay. So if you need to create that magic golden image that I was talking about, you need to come read about this game to create. It will help you do it. Um, because to me, what I was doing was I was finding an image that I liked, and then I would snapshot it. Um, there, which is okay, except the image I started with was 200 meg. I created an image from that image. I created an instance from that image. I made sure all the pieces were in there that I needed. I snapshot it. And that was 2K. Okay? Um, because there's a lot of stuff that happens after that image gets initiated the first time. So what this does is it creates a nice small image that I can upload and manage in my um, OG stack. So this is a just for Murano. This is any time I need to create an image. So if there's an OS and some tools that I want in my default image for my users and my customers to get when they do an install. This is how I go about it. So, for instance, for the Solaris or BST, I can, as long as there is, uh, uh, the, if you go down into the uh, into the disk image builder, there's a bunch of artifacts, and it explains what it needs to be able to build that. Right. So, where's the ISO lab? What's the default answers to questions, and so on. But it is very possible for this to build any of us that is supported um, on the x86 architecture or would be supported when I use a respective deploy. Questions about that? Yes? Are, are there other things besides uh, the instances and this ability to operate uh, with a machine? Uh, are there other instances of, of system objects that you can create with this image that are something other than a so I can do uh, I can also do painters here. I can do painters. So I can do a proper container, not necessarily a machine. What is that? so containers are um, the idea of a home free to correct me. Let's see if I can figure out I spent all week talking about containers. Yeah, I can do that. Just keep it high level. Container, the idea of a container is isolation of the process. So you can now slice a machine into isolated systems that are literally just the process itself. I mean, a full OS can run, you know, the same a web server all the time, right? It's not really a problem. The problem is that if one breaks, then you have really uh, targeted all the other ones too. Right? If I break two of them, I can get extra disk. If I Take one of them, make it very busy. Everyone else suffers because of that. But the container does put a box around it that limits its CPU consumption, its memory consumption, what resources the OS can get a hold of. And it gets its own little world that looks like a complete separate box. But it's 
just a process. So a container can be started in less than a second and you're up and running versus a VM that is going to hold OS and everything else. So when I say start, it's the same OS as a start a process like start Apache. That's literally the same time it's going to take to start it all up. It just puts a process around it. So let me, let me step back. So I have an OS, OK? So I have one OS. In that one OS, if you think of virtual machines, right, I have a physical server and I have these virtual machines that run on it. Each virtual machine represents or could represent a physical machine, right? When I go to containers, what I've done is I take one OS, so I take one physical machine, and what I've done is the different processes that run on a web server, a database. Um, what I've done is I've said, here is your own resources that you get in your own little lockdown world. There's only one OS that's shared by all these different machines that are running. <laughs> so what that means is if I update the OS, every container is now updated because they all run off that one OS. It's that instant you can the kernel. So each so depending on how you find you didn't have to you do whatever one talks about today is the Docker container. Each container has its own file system where you can use the databases and so on. So they can actually, they might, or each of them may be a specific library of the same name, like LibSSL or something like that. And each container may actually see a different LibSSL, depending on how it was set up. They could. Um, so they can have their own complete file, again, completely isolated file system. What you can do exactly what Greg is saying, you can say, well, everyone is sharing the same files on the whole system. If you want it. That's not considered secure, but it's absolutely possible. So if you did update the main OS, everything got updated. Um, it's just, it's, that it's, it's virtualization, but it's at a different level. Right. So that's not going to work. There's no way to think about it. I'm going to shoot your hand. I'm virtually saying I want to control a layer to switch. Yep. Okay. Is that an object that I can to create either this image or In other words, is this image builder specifically to uh, compute object virtual machines, or can it also build other things like network switches? Is it that right, right. I don't know. So, uh, so you did create a software client. <laughs> yeah. 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 If you find an OE switch, you can actually create an OE switch inside a container, which can be created yes. using, which is an image with all the binaries and all that stuff. And OE switch is a process that has privileges to the main OS and space that contain IP table and all that. I can't manage my iOS switch here, but I can manage image that. That's the cool part, like so. In OpenStack, we have an common API, as Craig was saying. You can define these things depending independent on the hardware around you. So you set up here's my virtual network, sort of like you send around. You set up your virtual networks, and you associate your VMs with that virtual. Network, even though you don't have a switch that really represents that. Either, either. Right, and that's the same way OpenStack does. So they create a virtual network that links the computer together, the nodes together, a virtual network that really doesn't represent this as hardware. But they all act like they were all connected physically to the same switch, for instance, or the same VLAN and all that stuff. And that's all simulated in software, although I would claim that all the hardware switch was in software. Who uh, supports containers? Because as far as I'm aware, the sun was the one that started it. Uh, well, I think it kind of started by the end. Yeah, that's because now we're going to have mainframes, but that's you know, year or yeah. and, and actually, it was IBM actually was doing LCOMs under um, their PowerPC, which are uh, AIS. 
So AIX was able to do that, and then with Annex on the hardware, they actually had it. So at the hardware, what sort of containers? They were, they were containers. They were calling them containers. And it's another thing you didn't allow it just forever. So who will support it? Red Hat will support it. There's a company called Docker, behind Docker, that will support it. Um, I imagine OS, HP, I imagine most of the others. OS, Microsoft Jester, and I'll support for containers. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's everybody has their own. Yeah. It's yeah. the new password of the uh, the other school. Yes, yeah. virtual stack containers are alive. <laughs> but it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, uh, software business is just as trendy as it ever was. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's a new fashion coming out every year, right? It's all driven by marketing. Oh. Uh, so just to show you a little bit, so it's one of my application. It is by default or uh, good uh, best practices. I have a package under package, and then I have a logo, which is a PNG. Uh, I'm going to have a manifest, YAML, get another Markle language. I'm going to have my classes and my classes. I'm going to have an admin uh, YAML. Uh, my resources. I'm going to have an admin uh, template. Uh, I'm also going to have the script deploy where my app name is. This is a script that's actually derived to install all the software. And I'm going to have a UI handle, which is going to find that pop <laughs> So it's a lot of files. It's crazy syntax. Uh, what happens, you know, that's my image. I need to describe the app, right? If I have a license, who created it, versioning any that sort of information. How do I tag it because I'm around like in different areas where you may want to say, show me all web servers, I may want to show me all databases so things can pop up, and then where those files are located. Classes are just like you think, you have properties and um, methods available to you. Resources are the workflow for the methods, so method is going to call the template. Template is going to be the workflow for the steps that you want. Right? I can actually include Python here. Called script and group, and usually it needs to install a package and the package of the packages, run commands, and figure those apps that they have installed. So, uh, example, I have a magic thing and I can share with everybody called snub at pqz and dot sh. Uh, I wrote a little example for Git, but what I did was there were so many things that I had to go and edit. That I make a mistake. And I was using a little debugging on my laptop under um, uh, open box, not open box, uh, virtual box. And uh, it would take me an hour to find out I made a typo. And the error I got was failed. So it wasn't very good, it wasn't very helpful. So I'd have to log in two or three places. Short and precise. <laughs> Short and precise. Yeah. So I had to log in two or three places to figure it out. So you know what? Let me just create a little script, stubapp.sh, that I can pass some information to, and it will create a default zip file out for me that I can upload that will just work. At least it got me to the point where if I go through it, I would see all the variables I set, and I would be able to go and create from there. Right? All good. All good artists steal, right? All good developers steal. So what I did was I'm giving you guys all these to be able to steal. Uh, and those are the magic pages. So let me go back here. Uh, this image looks like it's created. Oh, I, oh, I did upload the image. Wow. OK. So now if I come to. Um, Instances, I can say, let's go ahead and launch an instance. This happens here. Uh, that's uh, small, hopefully that's good enough. Image, I'm going to select an image. There's my image. Uh, oh, so see, there are no key pairs. Because I created a new project. So hey, and I can add a new user, right? Oh, where's my key there? And oh, I need to grab a public key. So let me go here. Maybe I'll show you something from that page. No, it's okay. 
sentido Delete the whole thing and paste it again. Nope, it worked. So it uploaded that key for me, right? So as you saw, even though I could go under identity and I could upload my keys, or right here where a key didn't exist, I quickly can say go ahead and add it. So I'm going to launch, and we're just going to see if this is going to networking. So can you get Yeah, it ain't networking. So it's saying, hey, select the network. Oh, there are no available networks. So I need to go and create a network and set all that up. But instead, what I want to show you, because it's a heck of a lot more exciting, is um, let me just quickly clean this up. Go to the images. Uh, image. So I want to use the image, and I want to show you that work as example I was talking about a lot. You guys can get an idea of what it looks like and how cool it is. Okay, yeah. okay so from here now, sign out. Back inside. Um, let me quickly, whoops, go to admin. We are projects. I like to pick up after myself, um, so that's what I'm doing right now. So anybody who does demos, anybody who uses this content, please, it's real important to pick up after yourself. Um, don't, be a, don't be a greedy person and, and eat up all those resources and leave them lying around. It happens a lot more than you would expect. Okay, so look at Murano. We look at application. We can see some of the applications that have been created out there, right? Grafana, Zax, Docker, Mongodb, right? We see all sorts of stuff. Let's go ahead and I want to look for WordPress. Hey, here's WordPress. So I could actually add it to an environment. I can create an environment and then make sure all the things that exist. Remember, I talked about creating complex environments. Instead, this application will create those contact complex environments for me very easily. So, oops, uh, oops, I the wrong key. so let's do a quick deploy. This is that UI file that I was talking about. Through some text, I say, hey, I need an application type of text. I need a database server, and that's going to point to an object called database. I need an HTTP server, it's going to point to an object called sort of, uh, web server. And then monitoring, this is actually optional, right? And I can have some text explains what's going on. So I'm going to call it WordPress. Um, I'm going to add a database server because one doesn't exist. I'm going to give it a floating IP. Uh, I do not need a floating IP because I don't need to get to this SQL server. If I don't give it a floating IP, it's only available on the network, which means I need to be logged in to a server network, which has to have a public IP for me to get there, right? So I'm getting a little bit of extra security on my database. I can change my database name, right? Uh, I'm going to again, the UI gives me a default name. Uh, so for this, right, uh, I can give it these are optional. If this is how uh, WordPress is going to be to MySQL. So if I don't put anything in there, it's going to use the default names that are hard coded into my application. Okay? I don't want to aim, but I don't want to go in and start looking around with it. I don't want to go screw up those tables and anything with WordPress. I don't really care at this point, so I'm going to leave those all 
as the default. So now it's going to come up and it's going to say, okay, what's time? Uh, I need I, I know I need this guy. Okay, my key. And that's what I want my SQL box to look like. I need a web server, so let's go ahead and tell me I need a web server. I need an able PHP, PHP because it's WordPress, and I want to give it a floating IP so I can get it from the internet. I can say next. And then ask me again what size do I want, what's the image, what key pair, and create. Now, I don't care about monitors, so I'm going to leave monitoring empty. And next. Now, I need to configure WordPress. So, database name is going to be WordPress. My user, I'm going to be LL. My password. Now, this says it's a tight password. So, I need a uppercase, a lowercase, a number, and a magic symbol. So, um, If I don't, it's going to come back and say, yeah, I don't know. So it didn't specify that value when you create the database. How does it manage? I'm sorry? It didn't specify these values when you create the database. So when I create the database, that is how, uh, this is how I'm going to log into the WordPress piece. That was creating the table stuff for MySQL. This is the WordPress piece. Which okay. About. Sorry. Good question. So now it's going out there and it's going to create an entire environment in theory. And then we'll deploy the environment. So the big thing is that I have done multiple times is I will set all up and I'll create the environment. I'll go get my coffee. Um, and I will forget. So if I go to environments, let's see what happens. Um, it's just not there. I didn't give the environment a name. All right, so here, here are the two pieces. Um, my SQL server. Yeah. Let's see. I wonder what happened. Um, we'll go ahead and just click. Now, if I wanted to add another piece, right, if I wanted to add PostgreSQL or this added station, I could just drop it here, add it. So let's go ahead and see what happens. It may not work because for whatever reason it threw that error. I don't know what I made of uh, So what it's doing is it's going to go and create two VMs. And the way it's going to look, which is kind of cool, um, if I click on topology, uh, that's the problem. So there should be a line from uh, yeah. here to here. So that's why it's going to work. Uh, but usually what happened is it would go and create. So now I just need to wait for it to time out and fail and I delete the environment. Um, but that said, you know, give you an idea of the power of being able to um, manage and create more complex applications for a piece of the Okay. Um, depending on what ends up happening, I may try to do my job. Uh, the other deploy of, um, of WordPress. Questions? So, can you maybe the end graph to actually be able to actually create a virtual machine? Yeah, so if I come up here to projects and then create on instances, I'm going to see those two instances being 